All right, happy holidays, everybody. Hopefully you're getting ready for a good Christmas season. Uh, so this week we get to spend some time talking about another proclamation that came out known as the Living Christ. This is another really important one to understand. Like we talked about uh, last week, how these proclamations are opportunities for putting our bearings in place for everything. And this one, of course, is about the Savior. So it's appropriate we bring this up and talk about it during the week we celebrate his birth and we focus on his life a little bit more. Uh, at the beginning of the Come Follow Me section here, there's a really good quote that I wanted to read. It says, in 1838, the prophet Joseph Smith declared, quote, the fundamental principles of our religion are the testimony of the apostles and prophets concerning Jesus Christ, that he died, was buried, and rose again the third day and ascended into heaven. And all other things which pertain to our religion are only appendages to it. That's in Teachings of the Presidents of the Church of jo for Joseph Smith, uh, page 49. In fact, years later, President Russell M. Nelson noted that it was this very statement of the prophet that provided the incentive for 15 prophets, seers, and revelators to issue and sign their testimony to commemorate the 2000th anniversary of the Lord's birth. So this is the, the living Christ. So that was the genesis of this idea of putting this document together, known as the living Christ. <clears throat> and, and I think there's a... This is the kind of thing I really want to focus on for today's uh, understanding is this point that Joseph Smith brings up, that the fundamental principles of our religion are the testimony of the apostles and prophets concerning Jesus Christ. Okay, why would their testimonies of Jesus be so important and fundamental to our religion? Put in the comments what you think it is. For when I read this and look at these things, it, it tells me, the thing to realize is the apostles are called as special witnesses of Christ. In a talk that was given at uh, BYU uh, during one of their convocations lectures by President Kimball, which unfortunately from what I understand, uh, this was, I learned this through an institute class, um, but uh, I don't think you can go back and find that talk because I think he had this this part of his talk taken out. So you can only find it in video or audible form of that talk. Uh, but he said, President Kimball said that many of you wonder if the apostles today have seen the Savior. And he said that uh, it is their responsibility and their right to see the Savior and know he lives. And any of them that haven't, it's their own fault that they haven't seen him yet. So as special witnesses of Christ, they have more than just faith and a, and a feeling of the Holy Ghost to testify of the truth of Jesus Christ and, his, and the gospel, they get an opportunity to have a more direct contact with the Savior. And that makes them special witnesses of Christ. So while the rest of us probably aren't prepared enough to be able to be in the presence of Christ, we all, according to the scriptures, can have that chance of doing that. It's called the second comforter. The Savior talked about it himself, in fact, uh, in the Last Supper. And so when he says, I will not leave you comfortless, but I will come to you. So there, we all have that chance of getting there. Now, because they are special witnesses, they are kind of encouraged in that direction a little faster than the rest of us, basically, to get that special witness. So uh, until the rest of us are prepared to see Christ ourselves, we rely on their testimony because they have seen him. So if you think of this as there is a box of treasure and only 15 people are allowed to see inside that box to actually see the treasure, we have to rely on their testimony to understand that treasure. So that's kind of a similar way as to why this is so important to our church, our religion, I should say, uh, is their testimonies because they have had experiences with the Savior. Now, I will, uh, they don't talk about it a lot. Uh, but if you if you watch them during general conference and you know regional and state conferences and things, when they speak, especially when a new one is called, there's a different type of spirit or emotion or way that they talk about the Savior on the apostles versus like Quorum of the Seventy or other people who speak. There is a difference. You can you can tell a difference in in how they talk about the Savior. Uh, and even you can see it in new apostles. So next time we have a new apostle be called, watch how they speak in general conference. And you can tell 
they're at, at some point they start to gain a little bit more emotion about the Savior. A more they feel more closeness to Him. They almost speak as if they are buddy buddy with Him and have just recently talked with Him. They, uh, they're, they're, it's different. You know, the new apostles, their testimony of the Savior is different than those who've been around for a long time. So if you look at like Elder Holland and Ballard and Oaks and these guys who have been around a considerable amount of time in the apostleship versus the ones who are just coming in, there's a bit of a difference in there. Over time, that difference starts to go away, but I have noticed that. So pay attention in general conference coming up. And go look at past conferences. You can even go back and say, go look at the conferences of when the last several people were called uh, in and then watch their testimony evolve as they are apostles. The longer they're an apostle, they start to get more and more emotion, more and more feeling around talking about the Savior. And I believe that's because of the result of them having this opportunity. So in a way, you can watch these apostles and get a rough idea of about when, in what year-ish time frame, they probably had an experience that allowed them to understand and be that special witness of the Savior. So they're called the special witnesses, but they don't, they aren't instantly special witnesses right off the bat necessarily. That They have to work on being that special witness. So just something interesting to look at because this document is them combining their special witness testimonies in one thing. That's what's so great about the living Christ. So thanks for watching. We appreciate you uh, following us all year long. Please subscribe more. We got uh, Old Testament coming up, Pearl of Great Price for next year. So I'm super excited for that. We got a whole ton of videos working on to, to show for that. And I've got so many notes on the Pearl of Great Price. It's amazing. So a lot of fun stuff.